Gia Lopez stood in a staging area for the submissive auction with a line of women covered in sheer black robes. Her long, light brown hair was twisted back into an intricate braid that was a work of art, but she desperately wished she'd gotten plastic surgery to take care of her big nose before agreeing to this. The other women scheduled to be sold off with her were beautiful, each perfect and lovely in their own way. She felt like a sparrow surrounded by peacocks. While Gia possessed enough self-worth to admit she was cute with her dimples and big brown eyes, she'd never be breathtaking like the auburn-haired sex bomb submissive next to her. Gia had a slender figure from her daily jogging, but with her small breasts she felt like a boy when compared with the curvy submissive. Why couldn't Gia have gone after someone who wasn't a pin-up girl? Mistress Alice, a tall, blonde dom, walked down the line of submissives. They were gathered in what looked like a parlor with all the furniture moved out. Elegant watercolors still graced the walls, and a tasteful chandelier bathed the room in a low, golden light. The door to the room where the auction would take place was currently closed, but from her orientation earlier, Gia knew that on the other side there was a curtained area to hide them from the audience. Then, the scariest of all, a stage where she would be sold to the highest bidder. Mistress Alice paused now and again to point out something she wanted changed with a submissive's hair or makeup and took a moment to speak with each woman. Up at the front of the line, a few men in brown leather loincloths presented a nice visual treat as they were oiled up by a trio of giggling submissives. Mistress Alice stopped before Gia and slowly inspected her from head to toe. When she spotted the gold barbells piercing Gia's nipples through the sheer cloth of the gown, she smiled. Lovely touch against your nicely tanned skin. The gold works much better than silver. Thank you, Mistress Alice. Gia curtsied as she'd been trained, and Mistress Alice's gaze warmed. The dom tilted her head and studied Gia's face. You're Mistress Viola and Master Mark's girl from South Carolina, Gia. Yes, ma'am. Mistress Viola and Master Mark were my trainers. Lovely couple. I met them once at a dom convention in Las Vegas. They told me to keep an eye on you, that you have quite a temper and are very high-spirited. Gia flushed and dropped her gaze. I'm working on that, Mistress Alice. Well... Don't work on it too hard. She leaned closer and whispered, Some of us like us subs with fire in their veins. We like the challenge and the constant battle for your submission. Gia started as the other woman gently bit her earlobe before leaning back. Am I understood? A soft rush of desire went through Gia, and she licked her lower lip. Yes, mistress. The desire unfurled gently in her belly as she relived her training and how she owed her trainers a debt she could never repay. It had been a unique experience to work with Mistress Viola and Master Mark. Together, they'd helped her start her transformation into the kind of submissive she yearned to be. They'd also given her glorious orgasms that swept the world away and left her existing as a being of pure pleasure. Not only did they train her physically, they helped her learn how to love herself just the way she was. Mistress Viola was a plump, curvy, delicious armful of woman. By today's standards, she was considered overweight, but back in the 1950s, she would have been the ultimate in female beauty. Gia had yet to see a man who didn't gravitate to Mistress Viola in a room, no matter how many other women were there. The fact that her husband, the more traditionally handsome Master Mark, loved her beyond reason helped more than anything else to make Gia believe that maybe there was a man out there that could love her just as she was and give her the confidence to become the woman she wanted to be. Beautiful, elegant, and loved. Well, she wasn't loved yet, but she would be. She had faith her master was out there looking for her. The thought of him being here tonight, maybe waiting for her in the audience, sent an ache of longing through her. 
The practical part of her mind scoffed at the idea of soulmates and fate, but the romantic side of her nature insisted anything was possible. A petite mahogany-skinned woman who reminded Gia of a pixie came up to Mistress Alice and knelt at her feet. Mistress, Master Martin wishes me to inform you we have fifteen minutes until we begin. Mistress Alice nodded. Thank you, Tilly. She smiled at Gia. Have fun, sweet girl. Whoever gets you is going to have their hands full. Thank you, Mistress. Gia bent into a graceful curtsy. The pair went farther down the line and Gia tried to slow her breathing. The red head in front of Gia turned around and gave her a warm and dazzling smile. First time? Yes. Is it painfully obvious? Yep. First timers are pretty easy to spot. You're the only ones who aren't excited. My name is Iris. Gia, nice to meet you. Gia smiled and smoothed her hands against the sheer robe. I take it by your lack of panic attacks you've done this before. Oh yes, this is my third time. Iris gave a dreamy smile. After the first auction, I was bought by a lovely dominant couple. At the second auction, I met my husband, who is also my master. Gia tilted her head in confusion. As far as she knew, this auction was for single, uncolored submissives. If you have a master, why are you doing this again? The woman laughed and fingered her collar. Because he wants to win me all over again. Gia couldn't help a small stab of envy. That's very romantic. A chime sounded three times, silencing all conversation. All of the submissives turned towards the sound, and the redhead leaned over to whisper into Gia's ear. Don't freak out. Whoever you end up with is going to be one of the best masters in the world. If you click, great. If you don't, then you will, at the very least, come away from the experience as a better submissive. Besides, all of the masters have your fantasies available to them, and only a master or mistress interested in fulfilling your fantasies will bid on you. Gia laced her fingers together, trying to keep her anxiety at bay. She didn't want to start shaking like a scared puppy. That's what worries me. She lowered her voice and leaned closer to Iris. I shared a bottle of wine, or two, with my girlfriend before I filled my form out, and I'm afraid the fantasies I submitted are a little more… frank. Let's just say I was super honest about what my deepest, darkest desires are. Like, embarrassingly honest. When I read what I had already submitted the next morning, I couldn't look myself in the mirror for the rest of the day without feeling like a pervert. Iris giggled. Oh, that does sound interesting. Care to share what one of those fantasies were? A stern man's voice rang out over the crowd. Ladies, eyes on me. They turned and Gia recognized Master Martin, the man who ran the Submissive's Wish charity auction and owner of this elegant mansion. Tonight, the distinguished man wore a dashing black tux with an expertly tied red and black bow tie that nicely set off his graying hair. His presence filled the room and all conversation stopped. Raising his arms, he smiled. Welcome to the 28th Annual Submissive's Wish Charity Auction. Some of your faces are well known to me as members, and others are delightful new additions to our evening. Whether new or old, I encourage all of you to make the most of the opportunities presented to you tonight. Allow yourselves to embrace your submission and give yourselves the freedom to enjoy the fantasies your masters or mistresses create for you without useless shame or misplaced guilt. For the next week, you will be at your master's or mistress's beck and call. You will find yourself challenged, pushed beyond what you thought you could endure, but in the end, it will all be worth it.